In this video, we are going to look at how to study metabolic reactions. It means we need to look at the, the steps involved in the conversion of a reactant into a product, which are the intermediates produced, which are the enzymes involved, which are the coenzymes involved, what is the sequences of reaction, what is the regulatory mechanism involved in this. So all these must be studied in order to elucidate a metabolic pathway. So you understand it is a very very tedious process and, um, and time consuming process and painstakingly several scientists have contributed towards understanding metabolic pathway the way it is today. So we are going to understand how, how which are the techniques that are used. A very important step in elucidating metabolic pathway is to know in the location. So in the location means in which organ or which organ which organ or organelle in a particular pathway is occurring. Is it happening in liver? Is it happening in kidney? So or is it happening in muscle? This we need to identify. There is a classic example so in 19, 1880s, diabetes mellitus was very prevalent and people were dying of diabetes mellitus. So that is the time two famous scientists, one is Charles Best and Frederick uh, Banty. These two scientists, they were doctors, they did a study on dog. They had some clue that it is pancreas which is responsible for regulating diabetes mellitus. So what they did was, they did two experiments. In the first experiment was, uh, they removed, surgically removed pancreas. Okay, so therefore you have two kinds of, uh, one is pancreas is removed. Okay, pancreas it is removed. In the second category, they did duct ligation. So what did they observe? When they fed these animals, these dogs with sugar, with the glucose, they observed that in those animals where the pancreas is removed, the glucose concentration increased. Whereas there was duct ligation, so there was no fluctuation in, in the level of glucose. So they drew the conclusion that pancreas is involved in diabetes mellitus or involved in regulating blood glucose level. This was a discovery. Then they went on to experiment with the pancreas. They made preparations of pancreas, homogenate of pancreas. Then that they tried to uh, treat individuals with the, with the preparation of pancreas. And then they concluded that a product from the pancreas is responsible for reducing blood glucose level. See how simple experiments were carried out in order to identify if the organ or the organelle that is present or that is responsible for a particular metabolic pathway. So in honor of the discovery, they were given Nobel Prize. Banding was in those days one of the youngest Nobel laureate. At the age of 32, he was, uh, he was a Nobel laureate. Uh, now, in 1960s, there was another major discovery. And that is to isolate cell organelles. Very famous, saint, uh, uh, very famous scientist, Christian Dedu. Christian Dedu. So, he experimented with the centrifugation. He evolved the differential centrifugation and through differential centrifugation, he was able to isolate mitochondria, peroxisome, uh, lysosomes, all these cell organelles were isolated. That resulted into focusing on in the location of metabolic pathways. 
to see how different discoveries they are contributing towards identifying a particular metabolic pathway. So therefore, the first point is identify the location or either cell organ. A second way to study metabolism is something known as perfusion studies. So this is a second one, perfusion studies. So what is done in perfusion study is a fluid is allowed to pass through either the circulatory system or through the lymphatic system to a tissue or to a particular organ. Then the unit flow based on the unit flow per minute is based on that studies are being carried out. So you are able to study an organ, organ or a tissue in, in a kind of a, 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 in a living system. You are able to study that. You are able to monitor the product which is formed. So these kind of studies have been carried out in earlier days. For example, a scientist who stabilized perfusion study and won Nobel Prize in 1920 is August Krog. So he won Nobel Prize in 1920. So similarly, many other scientists have contributed towards perfusion studies or different form of that. For example, Otto Warburg with his, uh, with his uh, manometric technique were able to uh, determine the level of oxygen in reaction mechanisms. So these all contributed towards understanding or elucidating metabolic pathways in, in its own manner in which it was contributed. In the third mechanism that we are going to study is uh, inhibition studies. So the third one is use inhibitors. So now you know that when you look at a metabolic pathway, assume it is glycolysis. So you start with the glucose and in a series of steps, so finally you have a product pyruvate. It happens in 10 steps. And there will be enzymes number 1, E2, E3, E4 and E10, that enzymes that take part. Suppose you use a substance which will inhibit this particular enzyme. E3 is inhibited. If E3 is inhibited, what is likely to happen? These products, these intermediates will get accumulated. So assume that this is A and this is B and this is C. If you inhibit this enzyme, C, B, A, etc. can get accumulated. This is exactly what is done in inhibitory studies. So they add inhibitor into a system. Then if the uh, reaction is allowed to continue, so when the reaction stops with the inhibitor, they will isolate all the components and then the concentration is determined. So this is by using inhibitory studies. So if we have to draw a simple histogram in an ordinary pathway, it will be like this. So in the intermediate number one, this is A. In the intermediate number two, maybe different concentration, intermediate number C, and finally you have the product. When you use an inhibitor, assume you are using an inhibitor, our graph will change. How our graph will change? They are getting accumulated. Okay, so if the product is very less, A, B and maybe C is getting accumulated because you have used an inhibitor here. So this is in the logic of inhib by in, in logic of using inhibitors in order to understand metabolic pathways. In the first pathway that was studied by using inhibitor is glycolysis. Conversion of glucose into ethanol was the first pathway that was studied. They used substances like let's say iodoacetate. Iodoacetate. So iodoacetate structure is ICH2COO minus. So iodoacetate is used. Iodoacetate will will bind to the sulfhydryl group of enzymes. So this will specifically uh, inhibit an enzyme known as aldolase. 
okay argolase it can also inhibit uh, um, you know glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate dehydrogenase enzyme so when it inhibits aldolase what happens all the intermediates prior to aldolase which are the intermediates you will have fructose 6 phosphate as an intermediate uh, fructose 1 6 bisphosphate as an intermediate these intermediate concentration of these intermediates keep increasing so you come to know that yes enzyme number four that is the aldolase enzyme is inhibited and this is these are the first few products that are formed in the pathway another important substance which was used as an inhibitor is uh, uh, fluoride fluoride is used fluoride will inhibit uh, uh, enolase enzyme you know that enolase is towards the end of a glycolytic pathway. When enolase is inhibited, what is getting accumulated? 3 phosphoglycerate and 2 phosphoglycerate. So, by using these two inhibitors, they were able to more or less draw a conclusion. This must be the sequence in which if the, if the, if the reaction is being carried out. So remember, they were trying to identify the sequences of reaction in this metabolic pathway. So we get a clue on how various inhibitors can be used in order to understand a particular metabolic pathway.